In today's lesson, we're going to be learning another method for solving quadratic equations. That method is called completing the square. So we're going to look and see how this works. First of all, we're going to learn a little jingle. And our jingle is you're going to half it and square it and add it to both sides. Try it again. Half it and square it and add it to both sides. That's going to be a very important part of completing the square. What we're trying to do is, is uh, create a perfect square trinomial. And here is how you're going to do it. When you have the equation in standard form, we're actually not going to begin in standard form. We're actually going to move the constant over to the right side of the equation. So this equation right here is already in the correct format. It has the A term and the B term on the left side. And it has the C term of the constant that's been moved to the right side. Now we, what we want to do is create a perfect square trinomial on the left side of the equation. To do that, you're going to look at the B term. So this time it's 14, and you're going to half it and square it and add it to both sides. So 14, if you half it or divide by 2, that would be 7. And then you're going to square 7, and that is 49. So here's where the half it and square it. Half the 14, square 7 is 49. And now you're going to take that 49, and you're going to add it to both sides of the equation. So what happens is when you write the equation out, you want to put the A term and the B term, and then you want to leave a space right here where you can add this number to it. And then notice we added the 49 to both the left and the right sides of the equation. Now when you do this, right here on the left side, you have created a perfect square trinomial. We have already learned how to factor perfect square trinomials. It's very easy. When you were back here at this first step and you halved it, remember that number, what it was when you halved it? It was 7. So, And then look at this sign. It's a plus sign. So it's just x plus 7 squared. That's how you factor that perfect square trinomial. And then on the other side, we have 15 plus 49, which is going to be 64. So that's what it looks like there on the PowerPoint slide. I wrote it as 7 plus x plus 7 squared, but you can also write it out as x plus 7, x plus 7. Now, over here, you'll see the checklist of what to do. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the square root of both sides. Well, when you have something like x plus 7 squared, when you take the square root of it, the square root and the square cancel each other out. So take the square root of that side. Basically, you just drop one of them. So when you take the square root of that side, you just have x plus 7 left. And then we're going to take the square root of 64. The square root of 64, you would probably say is 8, which is true. But negative 8 times negative 8 also equals 64. So actually, when you take the square root of 64, it could be 8, a positive 8, or a negative 8. So we say that the square root of 64 is plus or minus 8, which means both positive and negative 8. Now what we do is we're going to set up two separate equations. So we have x plus 7. And then let's just pick the positive 8 for the first equation, equals a positive 8. And then we solve and we subtract 7 from both sides. That would be x equals 1. Now we're going to set up the second equation, this time with the negative 8 on the right side of the equation. And now when we subtract 7 from both sides, we find out that x is equal to negative 15. So there is the solution. If we were going to graph this parabola, it would cross the x-axis at 1 and negative 15. So the most important part is to remember this part right here, the little jingle that we're going to use in the first step where you half it and square it and add it to both sides. So let's practice another one. Okay, first of all, we have to write the equation where the C term or the constant is moved to the right side of the equation. So when we do that, we would have x squared minus 2x. I'm going to leave a space right here because I know I have to add something to both sides, so I'm going to leave a space there to do that. When I move the negative 2 to the right side of the equation, that would be a positive 2. Now I do my little jingle. I'm going to find the B term. Here's the B term. I'm going to half it and square it and add it to both sides. 
Well, if I, to half it, you're dividing by 2. So negative 2 divided by 2 would be a negative 1. So I halved it. Now I square it. Negative 1 times negative 1 is a positive 1. Half it and square it and add it to both sides. So now I know I'm going to add a positive 1 to both sides of the equation. What I have done now is create a perfect square trinomial on the left side of the equation. So to factor it, remember when we halved it and it was a negative 1? So it's negative 1, x minus 1 squared is factoring it. It's very simple to factor. Just take that first step. What was it when I halved it? That answer goes right here. And it was negative, so it's negative. On the other side, we have 3. Okay, so we factored the trinomial. Now we want to take the square root of both sides. We'll take, take the square root of something being squared. They cancel each other out. So basically, it's just x minus 1 on this side. This time, we have the square root of 3, which is not a perfect square. Some assignments, they will have you go ahead and evaluate that with your calculator, and it's going to be a decimal. But for today, we're just going to keep it as a radical. And since it's not a perfect square, we're going to set up our two equations. x minus 1 is equal to a positive square root of 3 and x minus 1 is equal to the negative square root of 3. And then when we add 1 on this side of the equation, what we do is we just write 1 plus the square root of 3. We're just not going to evaluate that. We're going to leave that step out. So if we add 1 over here, we're just going to write 1 minus, sorry, that's supposed to be a minus sign, 1 minus the square root of 3. You could go ahead and evaluate that out with your calculator. But for today's purposes, we're just going to leave that as a radical. OK, so let's try it again. We're going to do a couple more practices. If you're going through the PowerPoint, I'll show you the steps there. OK, and this one, remember, well, first, it's already written in the right form. But as I write it down, here's the A term. Here's the B term. I'm going to leave that space because I know I have to add something to both sides. And the C term of the constant is already on the right side of the equation. Now our jingle, we're going to half it and square it and add it to both sides. So you find the B term right here, which is 10. You're going to half it, which is 5. You're going to square it, which is 25. And you're going to add it to both sides. What you have just done is create a perfect square trinomial on the left side of the equation. So we have done this. We have done this. Now we need to factor the trinomial. So when we halved it, it was a 5. So to factor it, it's just x plus 5 squared. On the other side of the equation, we have a negative 9 plus uh, 25, which is 16. I recognize that as a perfect square there, so that's going to be good. Now we're going to take the square root of both sides. When you take the square root of something b squared, it cancels each other out, and you are left with x plus 5. Now we're going to take the square root of 16, but again, when you take the square root of a number, it could be the positive or the negative. So the square root of 16 can be a positive 4, because 4 times 4 is 16, or a negative 4, because negative 4 times negative 4 also results in a positive 16. So now we're going to write our two equations. On the left side, we have x plus 5. It could be equal to a positive 4. Or we have x plus 5 could also be equal to a negative 4. We solve our one-step equations. And when we do that, we find out that it crosses at negative 1. And it crosses at negative 9. So if we drew that on a graph, it would cross the x-axis on negative 1 and negative 9. Those are the two solutions. I would recommend copying your notes off so that you'll have these steps in front of you that you can look at and go through. Okay, let's practice one more time. Here we have, this time it's not written in the right form. We're going to have to move the constant or the C term over to the right side of the equation first. So I'm going to write down t squared minus 8t. I'm going to leave my space for the one I'm adding. When I move the negative 5 to the right side, it becomes a positive 5. So we wrote the equation in the right form. Now we have to practice our little jingle. We're going to half it and square it and add it to both sides. So we're going to half negative 5. 8, which is a negative 4, and square it, which is a positive 16, and add it to both sides. Okay, so we completed that step. 
Now to factor the trinomial, we're going to take t, we're going to bring the minus sign down, and half of a to the 4, so there's that t minus 4 squared. Very simple to factor a perfect square trinomial. And on the other side, we have 16 plus 5, which is 21, not a perfect square. Now we're ready to take the square root of both sides. So when you take the square root of something that's being squared, they cancel each other left out, and you're left with t minus 4. We're going to take the square root of 21, which is not, again, a perfect square. Perfect square. So for today, we're going to leave it as a radical, and we're just going to write our two equations. We may have t minus 4 equals a positive square root of 21, and t minus 4 equals a negative square root of 21. So when you move the number to the other side, it would be a positive 4 plus the square root of 21, or a positive 4 minus the square root. There it is. If you're using the PowerPoint, it also steps you through the steps. Okay, this is actually the next. I'm going to do two more problems with you. These are two actually on the worksheet that you're using for practice. So on this one, we have w squared minus 8w equals 65. It's already in the right format. But I'm, when I write it down, I'm going to leave a space right here so I can add it to both sides. Now we use our little jingle, half it and square it and add it to both sides. So when you half a negative 8, that makes a negative 4. And when you square it, it's 16. We just created a perfect square trinomial on the left side of the equation. Now we're going to factor it. So it would be w minus half of your b term. So w minus 4 squared. And 65 plus 16 would be 81, which I recognize as a perfect square. So now we need to take the square root of both sides. So when you do that, on the left side, we have w minus 4. And we know we're going to take the square root of 81, which is 9. So it's either going to be a positive 9 or a negative 9. We can write our two equations and solve. So we have w minus 4 equals a positive 9, or w minus 4 equals a negative 9. And then we solve our equations. So we find that w is equal to 13 or we find that w is equal to negative 5. Okay, one more example. This one, again, is written in the right format, so I'm just going to leave a space there for it where I'm going to add my number. Okay, so now we need to find that term that we're looking for, so we're going to half it and square it and add it to both sides. So we find the b term, which is 10, we half it which is 5, we square it, which is 25, and we add it to both sides. On the left side, you have created a perfect square trinomial. So now we are ready to uh, factor the trinomial. So we have a, bring down the sign, which is a plus sign. What was half of that term was a 5. Easy to factor. On the other side, you have a negative 16 plus 25, which is a positive 9, which again I recognize as a perfect square. <clears throat> so now you're going to take the square root of both sides. <clears throat> we take the square root of something being squared. You're left with a plus 5. And we want to do the square root of 9, which is either going to be a plus or a negative 3. We are ready to set up our two equations. So we have x plus 5 equals a positive 3, or x plus 5 equals a negative 3. And now we solve both sides. We find that a is equal to negative 2 and a negative 8. So I hope this helps with completing the square.